Today we'll be taking a quick look at monitoring treatment interactions in FGEM. We'll go through how to establish an editor role if you don't have one already, uh, some of the best ways to find treatments and fires, go through a standard walkthrough of monitoring and completing treatment interactions for a fire, and end with a couple places to find additional information. From the FTIM page, I'll click FTIM Monitoring to go to our monitoring view. You'll see right now that the Wildfire tab, Treatments tab, Monitor tab, and Complete tab are all visible. This is a quick way to verify that I have at least an editor role in here and can do the monitoring that I need. If you were to log in and you only see Wildfire and Treatment tabs and nothing else, that indicates you are in the Viewer role and need to change to an Editor role. That's pretty easy to update if you go up to your username, click the drop-down and go to Profile, select the My FTEM Roles tab, Add FTEM Roles. Here you'll get a list of all the agencies and editor roles for each. Check the editor role next to the agency you need, supply a brief justification, and click Request FTIM Roles. That sends the FTIM administrators an email that someone's looking to update their role. They'll verify your request, and you'll be granted a role shortly. But in this case, we can see we have all four of these tabs, so we're good to go. The map extent here on the left is controlled by the region that's in our FTIM profile. You are free to zoom in and zoom out and move anywhere on the map, however, and the fire list to the right will be populated as you move around. It's truly a dynamic list, so you're not limited to your region if you need to work elsewhere. You'll also see a date filter as well as an agency filter. Uh, this appears in accounts that have more than one agency that they're monitoring for. You'll notice the wildfire name search field. Uh, if you look at the bottom of the list, we're on page 1 of 93, so it's by far the quickest way to search for the fire that you're looking for. Wildfires become available in FTIM when they're declared controlled, out, or contained in the system of record, and FTIM is updated nightly. So if you don't see a fire that you're looking for using the methods that we're about to go over, the most common reason for that is the lack of date information. So if a fire does not have a control date, contain date, or out date populated in the system of record, it will only be added after 45 days of record inactivity. So if you suspect this is the case with the fire you're looking for, uh, get in touch with your agency and have the fire information updated in the system of record. Before searching for my fire name, I'm going to change the date range. This is a demo, so I'll be looking for an older fire. Notice that the fire list grays out while the map is repopulating. If you're searching or changing one of the filters, it may take a few seconds for things to repopulate. I'll start to type in the name of the fire I'm looking for. The fire shows up at the top of the list, the Donnell fire. You'll notice the orange polygon icon to the left. The fact that that's a polygon indicates that the fire is a polygon. Uh, point fires are represented by the flame icon, and the fact that it's orange means it's in progress. I started monitoring this earlier and have not completed it. Red indicates fires where monitoring has not been started yet. On that note of monitoring status, if you're looking for a fire where you do know that it is in progress or a similar status, you can click the page slider up here at the top to see a full page list of fires. And notice as we scroll on the right, we get additional data for each fire. And on the left are filters. You can filter by in progress, completed, not started. Uh, to get back to the split screen view, we'll click the slider at the top again. Another way to try to find this fire if you're not seeing it in your list is to search using the attribute table, and the same method works well for treatments as well. For example, we'll search for this fire by the jurisdiction it originated in. So I'm going to clear out this partial name search and remove this filter on wildfire status and click the attribute table widget in the bottom right of the map. Our available search results are still constrained by the map extent, so a couple things, I'm going to make this 
larger and then also zoom out on the map so we can read the attribute table but also make sure that we have a large enough map extent to cover the area that we're searching in. I know this wildfire is a polygon so I'll click poly, go to options and filter, add a filter expression and you can see there's many expressions to choose from. In this case I'm going to go with jurisdictional unit is type the unit I'm looking for and click OK. I can see the number of items in the list has reduced considerably. Scrolling down I see the fire I'm looking for. If I want to zoom to this fire I'll left click on the edge of the record so it's highlighted in blue and click the zoom to option. I'll also go ahead and click this attribute table button because we no longer need this. There's the fire with the interactions we're looking to monitor. I'll click the fire on the wildfire list. You can see it's highlighted in blue, so it's now selected. One note here, if you click the wrong fire, you can unselect it with the X in the tab to the left of the fire name. You'll notice this Add Attachment button. It's visible here in the Treatments tab and once more in the complete tab before you submit your monitoring. So if you have any supporting image files, text, uh, that can be added to the system of record using this attachment button. We've also have cases of people who've recorded video, uh, posted that at a stable link online, and put the link in a Word document and attached that. So we can proceed to the Treatments tab either by clicking the Treatments button or clicking the tab itself. This list is automatically populated by FTIM for treatments within proximity of the fire. You'll want to go through this list and make sure that it's populated with the treatments with interactions to be monitored. Uh, for example, we can edit this list by using the Add Treatments button or the Remove Treatments button. For example, if I knew this burning of piled material treatment did not interact with the fire, and that it does not need to be on this list, I could check it, click Remove Treatments, we'll get a screen summarizing what we want to remove, I'll click Remove Interactions to verify, and we see that that treatment is now off of our list. One thing to note is this removes the treatment for that fire for all users who are viewing the fire. Uh, this isn't a big deal if you're the only one monitoring it. But if you're monitoring a fire and have other people doing the same, it's always good to confirm that another party won't need that treatment before you remove it from the list. If you remove a treatment and find out that it needs to be added back, that is easy to do. The Add Treatments button adds treatments you select to the list, either treatments that were not populated by FTEM or treatments that you removed and later needed to add back. And click the Add Treatments button. You can search for a specific buffered area around the fire and click Find Interactions. And here we see a list of all the treatments within a 1500 meter radius of that fire. So if I wanted to add Clark Horse Hand Thin to that fire treatment interaction list, I would check it and click Add Selected Treatments and it will be added to our treatments list. If you can see a treatment on the map that you need to add, but for whatever reason it's not coming up in the buffered search, you can add the treatment using the map. First, in the layer list, go to the treatments. And in this case, I'll find a point on here. This works with polygons as well. But click the More Options button to the right of the treatments. Make sure Enable Pop-up is on. If it is on, you can go to that More Options tab, and the only choice you'll see is to disable pop-ups. What that does is when you left-click on a treatment, it will pop up with a data box and an option at the bottom to add interaction. So if I were to click that, you can see it's added to this treatment list in the same way as the Add Treatments button works. Once you have your treatments list refined, you can start entering monitoring data. For the purposes of simplicity, I'm going to switch to a fire with less treatment interactions. 
treatments can be monitored individually or as a batch. So for example, if I wanted to batch monitor all of these chemical treatments, I would check the box next to them, go to the monitoring tab. You can see all of them are now in the monitoring tab. I'll check the box next to all of them and click enter data. You can see the first tab is the interaction details and treatment effects and all of the required fields are indicated by the red asterisk. So here's where you'll supply information on treatment interaction details, the date of treatment interaction, additional information on fire behavior and control, as well as a comment field. As you scroll down, you'll see additional information fields on fuel model and percent area, weather conditions, fuel moisture, flame length, and others. But all of the required information is up here in this top field. You'll also notice that treatment acres and time treatment interaction occurred are grayed out. That's because even for batch interactions, for the acres burned and time, we still have to go back and do that individually. So assuming we have all the information we need in here, except for those two fields, I'll click save and close. And then uncheck all but one, go back to enter data. You can see we get a notice warning us that anything we enter in here will override our old information. In most cases, this treatment acres burned by wildfire will be automatically populated. In this specific case, it's not, so I'm going to populate it manually. You may also want to populate it manually if, for instance, the treatment was 10 acres, but only 5 of those 10 interacted with the wildfire, or a similar scenario. I'll populate the time. And for these individual treatments, there is also the attachment button. Say I had a photo of the treatment or something similar, I could browse the files on my computer and attach that here. Once all the information is input, click Save and Close, and move to the next treatment and do the same. You can go back and forth between the Treatments and Monitoring tab. For example, if you want to go through different batches, or select individual treatments to monitor, you can do that as well. So if I were to click this Ridge Unit 1 as the only thing on the list and go into Monitor, I could have that be the only one in here. Similarly, if I just wanted to go down the entire list, I could select All, go to Monitoring, and just go down the list that way. So the monitoring aspect of the application is pretty flexible. Once you've monitored all the treatments for a wildfire, I'll all show up here in green, showing monitoring is complete. The last step will be the Complete tab to submit your monitoring data. If we click on the Complete tab, we'll see there's zero not started interactions, zero in progress interactions, and six completed interactions out of a total of six. So everything here is complete for this wildfire. Before submitting, we can view a table summary. This just shows a list of all of our interaction data. We can review it, and if there's anything we want to change, we can go back to the Treatment tab or Monitor tab and make those changes. There's also the Attachments button, again, to provide any attachments that are needed. If an attachment goes to a specific treatment interaction, it would be good to include that treatment interaction somewhere in the attachment name so that it's easy to keep track of which attachment goes to which treatment. And when you're ready to submit, click the Complete Wildfire Monitoring. We have a confirmation that the monitoring has been completed, and we can see our fire here on the map is now shown in green. The complete status. Before we go, I'll point out a couple places to get information and support. Uh, throughout the interface, you'll notice these little question mark icons. If you click these, you'll get a pop-up on whatever the icon is next to, and these are linked to the Help Center. So if you have a quick question, that's one way to find information. The other is to go to the Help drop-down and click Help Center. That'll take you to the Help Center main page, 
with the full table of contents and information for FTEM. We have steps for picking wildfires, treatments, monitoring interactions. These are the longer step-by-step -step pages. And if you're just completely stuck, you've gone through the help center, you've gone through the interface and just can't find something or something does not appear to be working correctly, you can request support through a ticket by going to help, request support, submit a ticket, and this takes you to the form where you can input your information and it will be sent to someone on the support team who will respond back to you. And that's a quick overview of monitoring an FTEM.